Sabah tadi. Kita Sabah. I just want to say, as we learn here in Daniel class, rights and freedoms is very important for our survival in this end time. Right? And here is the place where we learn about rights and freedom. And this here is the first place where I learn about rights and freedom. Right? Everything that we learn here, it is true, it is workable, it is from the throne of God, you know, for his people in this end time. So I encourage everybody to pay attention as well as they learn from and continue his presentation of my God's case. Amen. 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 Some of these questions once again. So, for example, the word of prayer, my grace of God. Kind, gracious, eternal God, we thank thee for yet another blessed and holy Sabbath day in which we, thy creation, dear Lord Father, which you have created, can acknowledge thy creatorship and glorify thee in as such. Oh Father, I put up as I'm about to begin this study that thou fill my mind with truth that I may explain these things, that admonish these virgins, so that at the end you may be glorified. Lord Father, help the virgins and Lord Father to keep an abiding experience at all times, even myself, as we continue to keep the Sabbath day holy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So, I'll be continuing my study by the grace of God from last week. But first, there was a question asked last week about forgiveness. About forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go to the truth I wrote down, but nevertheless, when we spread out truth shall come, we shall guide into all truths. We shall bring back to my words. So, no more. Let's go to forgiveness. The first is our forgiveness and our forgiveness. The first, we will just see. When God forgives, what happens? Right? From there, we know what happens when man forgives. We must draw it from someone to us. Yes. Right? So, the first scripture we're going to go to is Romans chapter 4. Right? Romans chapter 4. So, I'll tell you what just now. Romans chapter 4, and I read from verses 4, sorry, no, from verses 6 to verses 7, to verses 8, sorry, hold on, verses 6 to verses 8, Romans 4, Romans 4. All done? Alright, let's read thus. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness with all goodness, saying, Blessed are these who whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Right? So here, given I. Is one reference to David? Is one reference to David? Right? Describing the blessedness of man unto whom God imputes righteousness with all fruits, right? Saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Right? <clears throat> so to be forgiven, God imputed not righteousness, but he imputes righteousness. He imputes not, it's not sin, but imputes righteousness, sorry. Not in sin, but Amen. imputes righteousness. Amen. 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 So we're going to see now that this same blessedness is the same as forgiveness. And what this blessedness is, right? Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at Psalms chapter 32, verses 1 to 6. Psalms chapter 32. This is 1 to 6. So, Brother Dylan, what are you showing? So, we're going to see when what God forgives. What happens when God forgives? Okay. Psalm 32. This is 1 to 6. Welcome. It says, Blessed is he 
whose transgressions is forgiven, whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh imputed not iniquity, and whose spirit, and in whose spirit there is no guide. So you see that when Yahweh forgives, he imputes righteousness. And when he imputes righteousness in your spirit or your experience, there's no guide. So when Yahweh forgives, he justifies. Because God would not justify, forgive a man and leave him in sin. When he forgives, there's a change in a man. The experience of a sinful experience to a sinful experience. Amen. So we clearly see that when Yahweh forgives, he justifies. So forgiveness is justification. Right? You put it into God. Amen? Amen. Right. So that, that point is identified, right? By the use of God. So now, with a man, contrast. And this chapter 6 and this is good. Matthew chapter 6 and this is good. Verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And verses 14. For if we forgive men their trespass, trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if we forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Okay. So here it is identifying that we have to forgive or those that trespass against us in order for God to forgive us. Reason being is because if we pull a particular wrong against another individual, right? Your attitude towards the individual would not be an attitude of love, your expression love to the individual. But you and yourself will pull malice in your heart towards the individual. Mm. That is sin in the eyes of God. So therefore you must forgive that individual. Release yourself from that, to be released from that particular bondage in which you hold. In order for God to forgive you. So therefore that... Therefore that... The malice in your heart, right, must be removed in order for God, for God to forgive you. And I have a question to ask. So, so if the person will tell you, I know you'll forgive me, that's why I take your money. That's why, that's why I what? I know you will forgive me, that's why I take your money. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to forgive me. That's why I will take your money. What you will see? I will forgive you. 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 But first, you have to provide information and knowledge that that is a particular act is wrong. Right? Then to see they are wrong. Right? And once that is, once that is done, in the eyes of God, you did what was necessary. But at the end of the day, that's before they are, they are, they are God. Because you have paid your country before God by providing truth so that they have done with every situation because you still by providing grace to their minds. And if they go against that, that before that is before they are God. So you forgive them. And they repent. So if they repent, God then forgive them. You forgive them? The Philippine. And that's what I'm gonna get to. Yeah, that's what I get. And the same thing. Well that I'm gonna go in the room. Forgive us our debts, right? So God gives us truth, 
right? So we to ask him for forgiveness, to be forgiven, right? As we forgive our debtors, right? So we get our daily bread, which is because being justified and thing by the truth, right? And when we are justified, in order to forgive others, to forgive others, what I see is actually giving them or relating truth to them, right? For God to justify them as He justified us, right? So He given us our daily bread first before He forgive us, and then we will be able to forgive others, which is to share truth to them for God to justify them, right? And by that, he will, he will text what to say, and he does not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but that is the kingdom and so forth. So, the so, that I see, so you forgive and, them by giving them truth? The truth, yes. And what then, about if somebody is out in the world and they don't have the truth? Right. If you relay the truth to someone and they reject it, your conscience is clear before God, right? But the person out in the world does not have the truth. Right, but that's why you have to have to say, give them the truth and forgive them, in other words. So it doesn't only apply to people in the church, but everybody. For you to forgive somebody in the truth or out in the world is actually creating truth to them. So go on to forgive them. If they reject it, they don't want the forgiveness. And I think I just want to elaborate on what I think Sister Dale might be getting at. So if, if you have two unconfuted persons, two neighbors living next to each other, none of them in confusion, and one do a wrong to another one, could that person forgive the neighbor? Well, what I say, what I say is if, if, if somebody unconverted and they speak the truth, right, in that situation there, is what they say, we attend truth for the person to see the, the right or the wrong in it, so they will turn away from it, right? So, um, it might be like how the Virginia have the master mountain or the whatever, right? But the truth is truth. If it comes in a, a little form or a big reasonable explanation as the case might be, so somebody who's unconverted could still speak what they call truth that God can give to give somebody conviction. Alright, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Before you go to the scripture, when an incident takes place between two persons who are confronted, there's a factual evidence of what happened. And people will generally teach their children, don't lie, don't steal. For your conscience. Conscience, correct what I'm saying. So, you reporting the matter as it took place. You're telling the truth. And whoever is guilty, acknowledging I did so, so, so. That is how the unconverted persons could relate to each other. But we now is able to interpret that in the light of truth. But could they do that for the... Uh, what we are asking is, could they do that without God being in the car? Which would all could as a conscious forgive? level? Or could they forgive? No. Could, could they forgive? Could they forgive? Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So could they, could they forgive? Could they correct without God being in the car? No, they cannot. They cannot. They cannot. They could acknowledge the fact. I've built a stone and I'll break your window. <laughs> Sorry about this. But, but you put that thought in the heart. You see, the Bible said all have sin and come to glory of God and all the eyes and questions. Who could put that in a sinful man's heart to show another person where? The incident was to say, well, yes, of course, it's a one. I don't know how we will interpret that. And when I write that free love language. Yeah, that's not what the fact is. You did fell the stone and break the people with no. And you are obligated to replace it. So you have to accept that you did break the window and that you are willing to compensate. Otherwise, the police officers don't deal with that. In other words, compensation is not necessary. Well, we don't deal with that.
That's what I'm supposed to do. So what do, you, what do you call that forgiveness? And this one's um, maintain a particular few and four is good spin, right? And it's a um, point now. You know, so, that BSB is going to follow, right? Forgiveness of sin, right? Talk a little louder, the brethren and sin, but it's It has something called forgiveness of sin, or the forgiveness of sin. That is something only God could do, right? Exactly. However, we also are called upon to forgive our neighbor, our neighbor, our brethren, whoever it might be, right? We can't forgive their sins as God could forgive sins, right? So you have to have something to do with it. You are forgiving you, you forgive any truth. You know, if you need truth and fear, which have righteousness of God, forgiveness of sins, you just right? You can't just deny it. However, when we are called upon to forgive our brethren, we can just reach as far as we can reach. So we present, let me say they did us some wrong or some ill, we present the truth. What we're looking for is really signs of a change of value in the mind. Whether they say, well, I'm sorry, genuine change. Genuine, or however it is, we look for that and then we say, okay, that situation here is who created that? Do you create that or do God create that? Well, in all, right? All in all is. All in all, it will be the Holy Spirit behind the act of forgiveness. We forgive each other, we never forgive it us. Right, and it's still meaning when it's going to be in conviction with them to feel some sort of remorse for change of values in the mind is still the Holy Spirit will bring it. We can't so we can really have also which will probably provide that opportunity for the person to be forgiven. Right. By your by your movement the your wasting um, person and your attitude for the person to change by you forgiving the person. Right. But all in all is the Holy Spirit. So even so even in an unconverted situation, God has to be still at the work to bring conviction I think if you look at the good. If you look at the word forgiveness and you dissect it, you're given something for something. Because remember, your intention in talking to the person is not just to say, well, well, you know, well, I forgive you. The intention is to give them something that the values that they hold in their mind that cause them to do the wrong, to be removed. The word just continue as an instrument to give some portion of truth. Forgiveness. I'm giving you this for that. In other words, substitution. But remember, God has to work, right? I'm not talking about man with you. Okay? When you bring it truth, you've given that thing to a son to, so that they now will give up the wrong principles in their mind. And that's where God will work upon them so that they will give up the principles and then you'll have genuine, they're giving up the wrong, that force them to do the wrong the first thing. The wrong all right, let me just um, read what um, St. Vincent Brethren say here. They said, Sister Del, for me, in forgiving a person is not hiding malice in the mind towards the person, but you will relate to them with the truth of Christ in the heart, showing them the error of their ways. Amen. And after the brother there, somebody have a question, right? I'm going to question. Under the question of what's good, it was it the fact that you were forgiven and not forgiven. So we know one's born forgiven is a cleanser, right? Yeah. What to me, I can be corrected. When man forgives, we forgive in obedience to the law. Or in obedience to the word of God for God. Right. Now that brother has a love this son. You want forgiveness from God? So what it is you forgive, you give forgiveness according to what you do and what you say, oh, for God. That is the point I see. One is a person, one is a person, so you will be in so much. So, okay. Yes, yes, yes. You're working in an office with some friend with on your job site, and someone I co-worker have a favorite teacup. 
right? <laughs> and you bounce the teacup by mistake and throw it on and break it. Only for giving that, yes. How oh, forgiveness relates in that situation? If the person say, well, they could buy back my cup, but I still not my cup. I forgive them, but you didn't sin, it's an accident. So, what forgiveness would mean here? For forgiveness would mean not holding malice in your hand against the person. But the person did not sin. It's not a sin the person did. So I see forgiveness with humans have, have different levels because look, it's not a sin there. It's an accident, they break the person to come. It's by mistake. Acknowledging, acknowledging is an accident and it's just a teacup and there is no following and his friendship is more valuable to me. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's conviction. Yeah, but that's it. There's nothing for giving. Yeah. That's what that's it. You can't present a truth to help that person. In that situation, the person do nothing wrong in sight of God. It's an accident. Yeah. What truth are you going to present to them? What I want to ask is that so you have to put, when you forgive, right? Do you have to forgive and forget? Then you have to go around now with caution. 
she can forgive him, but she doesn't have to go back there. Yeah. She doesn't need to stay there to prove that she forgives him. Because see, they say, if I forgive no, why are you going? You understand? Yeah. So what forgiveness would mean in that situation is, I don't hold malice in my heart against you, but I'm not staying here. So forgiveness would really mean, the first statement that Sister Del put in here, not holding malice in your heart against me. And that's the same thing would have to happen when you take up. You're not holding malice in your heart against them because they're doing it. So that is what it would mean in situations like that. That grieving Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. But with God, forgiveness is a cleansing. Amen. Justification, amen. And even the captivator from the brother promise it, right? A person can forgive a person by not holding malice in their heart by mental, by mentally, right? Or they can go both mentally and verbally. So the person will have to go to the person to say, well, I forgive you. You can say I have distance and say, my heart. I forgive I don't want to smart against you by the grace of God. Or they can both speak the words because it's a mental cleanse in their mind. Based upon the truth that in your mind to forgive the person. So you can be at a distance or the first body. Question. Sister Candice. I have a question tonight. Let's talk about bringing up things. What if it is a situation where a person Commit some things. No, okay, lies. They are caught with right? And you forget. You know it's hard. You forget the second time. Before time, before time, they come in. Now you know that they lie at all. And you bring it up to show them, but look, that's not part of right? Uh, you shouldn't bring it up. If you forget me, you shouldn't bring it up. You what? What did you say for us? What did you say for us, Well, if I doesn't lie, then you should not have to forgive me. The first place I had to bring it back up, no. Right. So, uh, I raise this to say, I raise this to say, while you want to hold malice in your heart, Sometimes it is necessary to bring up something to show the person this is a particular fault. And that is love to help the person. And that is not malice. Right. And that is not malice. Bring it back up to correct a situation. To highlight a situation doesn't mean having malice in your heart. Right. Having malice in your heart is not relating properly to the person. Because of some wrong living in the past or present. That is what you want. Alright, so that's all. Let me ask a question. She's a Let's say a person like to you. Right? Yes, And you say, well, alright, I forgive you. Right? And the person come and lie again. Would you bring back up the last time that you forgive them? Or will you want to track the period of time? Yeah, it have to be it have to be on the um the basis of the person denying that they do that wrong. It wouldn't be one time. It wouldn't be one time. It's that person really had to be the night. But I don't do that, you know? Me, you know, I don't bear false witness, you know, what you talking about? That do not happen, you know? And then you bring it up and explain, look, you know, this is a pattern, you know, this is a fault, you know, you need grace for one time. So and so. Yeah, like that. Because a lot of people say, if you bring it up, that means you didn't forget. Because it's a fault, you should have forgotten it, you know? But sometimes to me it is necessary to bring it up to show a person. So it's why you bring it up. So you can see the phone and Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's why you bring it up and how you bring it up what you see. So we come back, so we come back to the uh, so we come back to the question again, Sister Sandra. Right? Can we forgive like God forgive. forgives? No. 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 No.
but 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 um you are not going. No. Just come back to the unconverted man. The unconverted man has God in him. The unconverted man no. The unconverted man do have God. So how can the unconverted man? Converted man. We know that. When we're going to ask questions, you ask in the context of unconverted people or us? General. 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 You see? Right. Yes. Bible says, let this man be who was born in Christ Jesus. So as long as you have to be right in you have all in you. The unconverted man. The unconverted man. But I can't run that part of it. So, so Cindy, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. I seen it because what for you just said is you have to watch it from the context of the world, right? For you, this is cleansing the reality. When you want to make yourself free, you can get the person to the truth. Now we know a, a Gentile can get conviction, and at that point in time. The under conviction to the same truth, they're not converted. So they could forgive somebody in under conviction. In that state. Right? But what is conviction with us? I mean, what is con forgiveness with us? We, not, we can't cleanse nobody. So, as Brother Brother highlighted, is really watching the person without malice and relating to them without malice. When God justifies us, God in us see heaven, he watches without malice. And he sees us in reality righteous. We are not watching the person who in sin as the sin free. But our relations towards them supposed to be without malice and considering hey, they can change. We don't even dare mind the change, but we're supposed to relate to them as if we change. But God will show you if that was then change and you will show you if to tell them they are hypocrites or not according to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But in your relating to them, what to because you're not the judge, you can't be put out penalty. God being the judge in forgiveness, he can put penalty to the to the person. You can't put penalty. Alright, so it comes down to the person not holding malice. Yes. In yes. relation. That's an unconverted person. Converted or unconverted? Not holding malice. Because what forgiveness is, yeah. is the truth. That's, that's what is used to forgive. So an unconverted person can get conviction to the truth. So therefore, they're in a situation there. They can say, well, I was really wrong. And it was not wrong to what they want. I will forgive you. And they can forgive the person. That, at that point in time, that situation, we was wrong and the, the pain behind them, I mean when the pain behind them, they're not in the memory gun, but they're not relating to the person as if that is a person the person present state. Oh, so what are their plan? What the sister say is all all man is somebody beat you up and they break your hand or something. And when you see them, explain that in the light of conviction working there. And when you see them, how you respond to that. Remember they beat you and they break your hand. I ain't talking about somebody who just, but I get busted with some twins. You really don't get busted. That's different from a break your hand, but then you're going to do it. You say it's really just a break your hand, but then you're going to do it. In relation to the person, well, me and the person don't talk. But when I see him, I know he has converted, and the opportunity come. I should no, 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 you're talking now about you. I'm talking about you not converted. This case, no, I'm talking about your own converted. Did you really unconverted? Well, right, before I was converted, well, what happened with that situation? I, I, I was never violent with you, but what happened after about some months, I never seen him, and I never seen him up. So I was forgiven for that. But I realized I was, I was, I realized I was wrong. And I asked God for forgiveness for it before I even started to come back to church. And after I see him, and he come and give me a bounce and thing, and I see him and we never talk. And at that time, I had nothing against him. You don't beat him up by <laughs> When it's like you're supposed to execute penalty, that was true. <laughs> <you. laughs> no, no, I wasn't, 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 I w
I know my but I wasn't excused. I didn't tell That's not your... That is not my duty. Okay. 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 Is forgiveness based upon something evidently wrong done against somebody, or is forgiveness based upon how the person feel about somebody doing something? That whether it's wrong or not. No, no, no. Right. So what I said is forgiveness based upon somebody doing something that is evidently wrong against somebody else, or is it based upon how the person feel whether the person do something wrong or not? So based upon the examples that I want to give for the people, for them by accident, would you say that is evidently wrong because it was an accident, or was that based upon the person like the cop and somebody said it? So what is the difference? What is the evidently wrong because the person fight because the property or the destroy? But what I say, you agree that it being an accident, then? I know, but it is destroyed. But the person who broke it, they themselves will say sorry. If it was wrong, then I would rather tell you sorry. Exactly. You see, that comes now to conviction. Yes. How this is not result, Frederick, is that each person, when God gives you conviction in your heart concerning what advice is he should, whether you're unconverted or not, because remember God is seeking to save people from the time they are born on earth. And how you have to resolve it in all things. Look at parents are doing things and you just be mad vex about it. If you could get a chance with them, you and them would really have it all back. You understand? And what would slow you down about that? Is the convictions of God, and God will show you where look. Look, they are unconverted. What do you know they know? You really don't know that they don't know what you know. <laughs> so then, very and truly, you have to pause, consider, and, and be merciful towards them. You understand? So likewise, you might have to hold on relatives. I had an experience of that last week and I was so surprised, but I was thankful for the grace of God that I was able to relate to the person. Because it's war we have it, war, silent war, knowing very well that they are unconverted. That is the idea. You is a set of unconverted people, yet still, the conviction I got in my heart is that people don't know war. And if you relate back the same kind of hostile way and don't show for love, you will have mercy towards them. The war will be continuing all the time, so when will it end? You have to put an end on it by the knowledge of the truth and relate to them pleasant. Show them that look, really and truly, I understand what it is all you're going through. And you begin to give them some words of encouragement, words of truth, you know, knowledge as a Christian will relate. You understand? And when you do that, that now softens the situation. That later on, another one called me and told me, cousin, so, 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 and I was, what is this? You know, so the influence pass on. So in the world, you have people who you would have enmity with. They're doing wrong things towards you. They're evidently wrong. But what will slow you down to, to, to relate to them in a way that this thing could get some resolution, that you will be at peace with God, and they themselves could get conviction that they should take a different action and leave it there. And then God will work it out these circumstances that surprisingly they were born and say, well, sister, I'm sorry about so, 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 you know. Who working that? Is the Holy Spirit working that in the person's minds? So basically that is how we have to resolve these things. Otherwise it will be pulling a thing going with you down the road, down the road, down the road. And when will it end? When will it end? When will you know the fine tune of what it is God doing and all this thing? God brings conviction to each person's mind. And if you respond appropriately to the conviction, that is not a stepping stone to heal whatever it is, is the problem. So this is how I see this thing when we serve. Okay. Right, we serve. Good. Okay. So Brother Dylan, what were you going to do today, or, or, or what would you be doing now, like to explain to us? What I was going to explain by the grace of God is that 
instead of when you are set up on forgiveness on malice in the heart towards the person, right? Because you can never forgive, have being set up forgiveness and have love for you. Set up on forgiveness, sorry, and who love in the heart towards the person, I can never have love. So therefore, when you set up instead of unforgiveness on malice in the heart towards the person, therefore your attitude towards the person can never be expression of love, right? So we know that when God forgives, He justifies the individual. But when man forgives, the attitude towards the person now changes from an attitude of malice, but now an attitude that they express the love of God towards the person. And that act of ex that act of forgiveness, which is an expression of the love towards the person, was love towards the person, they receive conviction, right? And based upon that act, it provides an opportunity for that person to be forgiven by God. Because they see that, look, this person, I did this person a particular wrong. Why don't you forgive me? That is the love of God manifested towards me. So that means conviction towards the man's mind. And in doing so, he can now go to God. It provides an opportunity that he may seek forgiveness from God. Because remember, in, when you did not forgive the person, the person have a mindset that this person, I did something completely wrong. God will not forgive you for this particular, particular action. And this person who is to be a Christian, not forgive me. Oh, God forgive me. Right? So, have, have the mind in a particular bondage. But when you come and speak, the words of grace, so your attitude towards the person is a God like attitude. The love of God manifested that softens the person's heart. Brother Dylan, I think you have to specify the unconverted person related and the converted person Amen. related. Well, we know that. Because when you're talking, it's, it's, you might have to switch between the unconverted and the converted. Amen. Seeing what Sister Sandra was saying in regards to conviction. Because when an unconverted person is in the world, they're only under conviction. Because you know that conviction and conversion is two different things, right? Yeah, they take into consideration also what Brother Dylan was saying. Dylan was saying, right? Yes. Conversion and conviction is two different things. Conversion is something consistent, right? And conversion consistent in the actions and in the attitudes. So when, when God reveals himself to that particular person for a short period of time, right, they are, they are now able to search their minds and see, like, for instance, I don't have, I don't forgive this person, I hold malice some towards the person. So now they want to seek the person in which they put unforgiveness towards, and the attitude towards them will change. And that's also an opportunity for the person to be forgiven also by God. So at the end of the day, it's still God doing the forgiveness. Yes, God is using him as an instrument to make convictions in the person's mind that they will be forgiven by him. So at the end of the day, God is wanting forgiveness. So that is an instrument for God to forgive the person. And that's what was in my mind. Well, Medina, um, we have been talking a while in regards to the question that you asked in regards to forgiveness, right? Some, some, all right, some of us uh, came to the conclusion that um, you do not hold, you do not hold malice in your heart towards the person, and um, some people came to the conclusion also that uh, God could use an unconverted person uh, to bring conviction to them to forgive the person, to forgive a person. <laughs> forgive another person. Mm -hmm. huh? Meaning he put conviction 
in their hearts, the unconverted person, to not hold the malice in their mind against that person that has have wronged them. Or you mean like Esau and Jacob? Yeah. Esau and Esau. Remember Esau and Jacob. Remember Esau came back to kill mm -hmm. because he did not have what is his forgiveness in his heart, which is really not for you. Mm -hmm. He came to kill. Uh, came to kill now. From dinner, um, came to kill people fight at the back, the, 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 the. Esau came to kill Jacob. And God made, God made Esau, God stopped Esau. Mm -hmm. What happened here? Did Esau forgive Jacob? No, he didn't. And what is forgiveness from a human being? See, that is why you always talk about focus. What we are for, what, 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 what you need to focus is what is forgiveness of that's a human being. How do human beings forgive? What is the real forgiveness of human beings? And if a, if a person in the world tell you, I forgive you, what does he mean? You just don't hold it against you. That's what the world calls forgiveness, but that's not forgiveness. There are some people, the rape the girl daughter. But the rape the girl daughter, she herself, Angry, 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 but not anger is long short. After a while, the gravity of the event passed, so she don't hold it. That is not forgiveness. And then she may become some ethical state for society. Forgive people and it is peace for you. So she does say, I don't hold it in my mind. So have peace. But she won't forgive herself. Because she don't hold it in her mind. So we're talking about you giving something to somebody. I give my job, I give my job, I give my so it's just like that too. You understand? It's given. So what does it mean for you, maybe you the Christian, to give forgiveness? And what is the difference of that forgiveness to how God forgives? Okay, so you're talking about Christianity now. Yeah, but so you know what the world gives away. Okay. The world cannot give you forgiveness. In himself, they say, oh. in himself in the world they say, it's unhealthy for you to be holding this thing on you. It's eating you up. You have to forgive others. Yeah, I mean that. Emphasis, yes, to really help yourself. Yes. Yes. It's not forgiving what? It's not forgiving. Others. So it's not really forgiveness. Right? So we can just move on with that. So the point is, what is forgiveness coming from us? As we say. Giving truth is also this. This is only related to sins. When it deals with human beings. Forgiveness is not only related to sins when it deals with human beings. Okay, let me give you one more illustration. So, somebody may have broken into your home, stolen the television, the fridge, and so on, and go. They found out who it is. The poor person comes and say, I'm sorry, they give you back everything. But they're angry at the person. So, the psychiatrist says, You can't keep that anger in you. It's damaging you. Okay? Forgive the person. Cool yourself. Forgive the person. You can get back everything. And you come and say, Well, okay, you know what? I forgive you. It is still for something that is what? Wrong. Forgiveness always relates to something that is what? Wrong. That is sin. But the point about it, you're not really forgiving the person. What has right? Give the illustration that you gave. Give it again, but you get in a place with some people, right? In an office or something. And you accidentally break somebody's two cup. Did you still there by accident and break in their teacup? I can answer that two ways. Yes, if it's talk less, first it would be sin, but we're talking about a genuine accident. Okay, I can still answer in a certain way. Yeah, what way? You just live by faith. faith. What faith did the accident? Uh -huh. We do make accidents even yeah, though we are proud of it. I agree with that, but, I, but, but it's, uh, it's beside the question. The question is, what faith caused the accident? <laughs> <laughs> then, then, <laughs> then, then, <laughs> since the judge shall live by faith, where did the accident come from? Talk if it didn't come from faith, what did it come from? Negligence. So then, if you have a case, what accident should be said? 
is not true. Out of sin. Okay, take for instance, watch me now. So Christ could have done that one. If he could have done that one? Yes. Yes. Or for instance, it could be using something. You're using something, right? And you think he's in, but watch how you're doing now. Watch you very well. <laughs> watch this, eh? Watch now. You're doing something, and you think burst and spill on the ground. Uh-huh. It was an accident. Yeah. You were using the thing. Was that accident that said, no? You didn't burst it and throw it on the ground by mistake. Right. right? So not all accidents are sin. But we did in an accident where you, there's someone some deficiency in you. Do some wrong, or do something. A decision in you do something. So it says, watch. The person now taking the, the person now taking the glasses, they rest it down here. And that has a cross. They put them in the first glass. And you pass and run, do so. You didn't see the glasses. The hand moves, so it bumps the glasses, it falls. And by the time you make the next cut, that's what's going on here. Thank you, that's not only two people. On what? No, 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 but now I'm coming out to the person who think I'm falling and breaking. Now, okay, now give me the, now here, here the point. Give me the specifics now. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, oh, yeah. I'm falling well, and breaking. Well, I didn't give any specifics. It was general. Right? right? But, the, the but main, you couldn't judge from that way. Huh? You couldn't judge from that way. But the main thesis was basically it was not intentional. That right? was not enough. And, and also, it Mistakes could, mean it is not intentional. It, it could be a situation like glasses. No, well, hold on. Right. But because it is a mistake, it means it wasn't what? Intentional. intentional. Yeah. Right, so that's what mistakes mean, right? So, clear that. so that's what mistakes mean. Yeah. So forget Accident. that. Yeah. But I accidentally. Same thing. Right, so forget that. Now give the real specifics about it. See, come falling on it. You are right by accident. No, but no. give the specific. No, but like, like Moses said, the post, let's say the post you rest down the cup where it's not supposed to be, and I pass and I don't see. You understand? Now, you see, I, I come and I open and cover the rest of the any cover that not supposed to be there, and I'm not expecting them to be in the cover. I should only cover and break it. That was not sin. Right, it was not sin. But the person now, but I did break the cup. Right? So it is not a sin. But it doesn't. You would say, tell the person, sorry. Right. So, but that and person. And the person will say, no, it's my fault. But the person will say, I'm not going to forgive you. Mm-hmm. Watch out, that person is terrible. Right. Because they're thoughtless and unmerciful. Right. Right. So, this is what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Let that person buy the woman like that. Yeah. Yes. 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 What I'm saying is, in that situation here, right? For business. For breaking the cup would not mean because it did something that is a sin. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So in for, so forgiveness, that's why I just question. But what is this forgiveness you're talking about? For breaking the cup. Yeah, but because what is this forgiveness you're talking about? If it is sin, you will not know for what is yeah, For what the forgiveness is. Yes, for what is the forgiveness? You know, the discussion really is in focusing on the point is God's forgiveness and what? Man's forgiveness is different. Yes. Or the similarity. Yes. Well, right? what, so what is that forgiveness? What I would say in that situation, because who cup was broken, and you tell them sorry it was accident. What I will say that they don't hold it against you and really to you but not because of that. Well, we That's already, what I would say. Even though they were for Yes, even they, though they, they were listen now, right? Yeah. Right. So we already understand forgiveness there yeah. in that world. He said they don't hold it in the mind against the person. And nothing right. would be wrong with saying that situation like that. Nothing would be wrong with all what I've now said in that situation. You mean that that is forgiveness? Yes. Would it be? <laughs> or would it not be? Okay, well, if you want to say, you say they don't hold it against you and they really mean it, under conviction, okay? Yeah, yeah. Under conviction, yeah, what do you say? Yeah, 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 I agree. It's only under yeah. conviction. Yeah. 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 But what is it for you? This is what you're discussing, is it? How the edges get to the heart of the thing. When you get to the heart of the thing, all that will be nice. <laughs> You see, that is the point. The point is, if you were supposed to say it, you always supposed to say it. Yes. You mean to say nobody here? Look at Brother Michael, the theologian. 
politician is more like a superman. Think about it very carefully and see, right? Now, I, I'm not telling you everything, I'm just saying that's what you think. Because sometimes you don't have to tell everybody everything. Individual thought, let me tell you something. Any movement that must make it great must have members that have individual work. That's why we get studies the way we study, for people to, to encourage people to do work. More than anything else, people need to learn to think for themselves. Sometimes you can say everything. Many times I speak, I don't say everything. So if I were to say everything, you would still be about two voices only. You understand? Okay? So you have to, you have to remember this important thing, as I said before. You have to think individually to get something. You have to think individually to get something. And in this church, we encourage individuals to think like our brother is doing here, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes I may call you and say, could you come up and give a little thing? It's to encourage you to think, right, Sister mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, right? So from the, you know, what, what, is this, what is it called? The psychology of lying, that's what you call it? Well, you can call it the psychology of deception. This, be much more the psychology of deception. And be careful if you discuss that topic, not everybody here will be able to take it for themselves. Okay. <laughs> limits. All right. And if you tell me, say, don't ask me to talk. Because I would say this. <laughs> Sometimes it's not good to show people themselves by saying to me. Sometimes leave it. Just leave it away. Once the person is on a part of the ministry, they will learn to handle all of those things. Essentially. And the only important thing is to help people to develop with as least the least advancement as possible. Yeah. Embarrassment must only be when it is absolutely necessary and it can't be better. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? This is this way so? So you catch the idea now, right? Good, you understand? I didn't show anybody so. <laughs> okay. Right? So the point as I'm saying before. The point about everything is to help people as much as possible without bringing any big embarrassment. And sometimes the embarrassment is necessary. But as much as you can afford not doing it, it is all easy. Okay, and remember when upstairs, upstairs is open, we're having a ministerial class where all those want to be ministers of the gospel. And when the class is finished, hands are going to be laid on you. Okay? And you're going to be are uh, ordained as a minister of the gospel when we finish with the class, okay? Amen. Amen. And this is not just for males. This is male and female. female. For there is no male or female with all work. One in Christ Jesus. That's right. Okay, so, okay, so Brother Medina, mm -hmm. yes. next week we are not discussing the psychology of life. Why? 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 Just go ahead, but just be careful when you talk to me. Okay, so it can be a... It. Yes, so he's going to be like this. Well, he's the um, speaker. Okay, well, brother, you can go ahead. <laughs> Present the psychology of this. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, so... um. Actually, actually, it is... Personally, deception. deception. Actually, it is very personal. Brother, yeah. Trisha, Trisha was not making a contribution here, right? Yes, my dear. She wanted to say something. Say your face. Say your face. All right. So I was thinking, right? That's my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's it's something general. You might be discussing, right? Um, sometimes when you say something, you know, it may fall in a person's garden, right? As they say. But how will it be like embarrassing if no one else don't know? But you know that that is your problem or whatever your fault. You understand? So. I you might feel a trend with I say. Yeah, so I'm um, to bring it like Well, you could know two ways, you know, either it's your personal problem and you know it will be so with others, or you could know people to minister to them over the years. So you know general things, how it's related to it. You understand what I'm saying? 
Huh? Rice bowl from the last half no. Huh? Rice bowl. Rice bowl. Rice bowl. Rice bowl. Rice bowl. One half one. Next 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 for years, as I have dealt with people, all young baby, male, female, Solomite and all. I said, all right. <laughs> yes, do you know I converted two Solomites by the grace of God? From their Solomite, two of me, they literally give it up and get baptized. And who could be more than them? I even remember their female names and all. <laughs> because they gave themselves to me. Right? So what I'm saying is this. When you work with people over the years, you know, how people are affected by things. Okay? So you know what you should say and you know what you shouldn't say. Let me give you one illustration here with the um, psychology of deception. What I'm talking about. Let me give you one example. All of us at one point in time practice deception. Most people, even their dressing is deception. Right now, here, yeah, right now, right here. Yeah. Even the dressing itself is a kind of idea they're giving about themselves that is not so. And it is based upon how they think about themselves. A whole set of insecurity, even the very dressing itself is deception. You want to go into that and then have a lot of people see a things about themselves they shouldn't see here now? Oh, no. No, brother, no. <laughs> Even if you as an individual, watch me, even if you as an individual may be able to take it, That's not right. everybody will be. That's the point. And the point is if you don't want to ruin people before they get a chance to handle themselves. That's yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Look at what I just tell my brother here. Right? Great faith is only a choice of me. Do you understand? All you have to do is to choose. You have all the faith of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is to choose it and live it, and you can do wonders. The difference between the image you portray by not choosing faith, and the image you portray when you choose the faith of Jesus Christ is so wide. Amen. That one can see an unconverted, and then when you choose, and God just has a converted faith. And everybody needs the converted individual. Amen. They need to convert, it's only a choice. If you just have a phone call, you only have a phone call away. Justification is only a choice of it. You just repent and believe and guess what? And remember, your image is not the past wrong that people are the wrong they like to do. That is not your character. Let me tell you again. Your character are not the wrong they like to do. Your character is your born again self, which is supernatural from outside of you. Don't be lost. Never find yourself. Stop seeing yourself as the wrong. When you see yourself as the wrong, what will you do? You will live that. Because your mind focuses on yourself, focus on Christ, in whom all of us are. Amen. Amen. Remember, his voice sounds like many words. What? Oh, yes. That's you and I. Amen. Word of God. Catch up on that. Hey, from Nina. Right from Nina, St. Vincent, brethren, was listening on. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And um, they asked me to read a text. So the text is from James chapter 5. Yes. Verse 19 and verse 20 in regards to forgiveness. It says, if, um, if a man, if any of you do err from the truth, if any of if any of you do err from the truth, so since the person err from the truth, you have to give truth to convert the sinner from his ways. That that is what is that is what forgiveness is, right? So the, the earth from the truth, you have to give them truth to convert them from the error of their way. So we you know one thing for sure: every time you preach, you are giving forgiveness. What do you see? Amen. 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 Even for things you don't know. That's why sometimes I'm person here, and all the wrongs that you don't know, they say, you know what? I'm going to stop this. 
Notice him give them truth, they didn't even know they belong to them. And they repent, and they give up all the So whenever you preach, what are you doing? Forgiveness. What are you giving? Forgiveness. Right, so your preaching is always giving what? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. There are a lot of forgivers here. Yeah. Yeah. And I have an excuse. If it's a very person do not repent, does it still mean that you did forgive? Even though they don't repent, it just means they didn't accept the forgiveness. But you, forgive. yeah. but you gave them the forgiveness. You see, giving forgiveness doesn't mean you know, that the person must accept it. How much time Christ forgave Judas? How much time? You know, you know, you know what Christ did when he was speaking to Pilate? You know what Christ did? Christ says you have no power except to be given to you from above. What do you think Christ telling you? Listen man, it is God that gives you authority. And if God allow me, this happen to me, whatever power you have, you couldn't do better. What Christ gave him? Did he accept it? No. 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 And he ended up killing himself. But when he reflected and he saw the great grace that was given to him, and he recognized how he could be so different, he couldn't hear what happened to him. His rejection. And when he talked about giving Christ up, having Peter and then giving him up, he recognizes God that was in a temple for the creator of the universe. He, he gave up the creator of the universe for people to beat him, beat his body. The body of the creator of the universe. And then when the Timothy to wash it and he's a judge and say you're not guilty. As Mrs. Weiss says, all he could have done is to say no. And the Jews have grabbed Christ and do what they had to do with this. See, so he was given forgiveness, but he didn't accept it. And what do you think Christ did with Judas and three and a half years? One of the most sensitive scoundrels, so to speak. Why do I say that? Every little thing was a problem for him. If you're watching too hard, that is a problem. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, bad. They sent the disciples out to preach why he wasn't put to lead them. Christ even let him hold the money back, knowing he's a thief. <laughs> And he wouldn't pay the disciples when he did what he only paid himself. And at one point in time, look at a public situation here. The woman come, all her expensive costumes she saved up money for. Christ touched her so much that she actually saw God was in the temple of worship. So to her, what is taking her perfume that he himself make a point? He told her, in the foot, big, big, big. The foot of the body that he's dwelling in. And Judas see that, and all Judas can see plenty of money. And the hypocrite come and say, would it not be better to take that and sell it to give to the poor? And all, imagine Christ has to take all that and still give him true. And Christ said, the poor you have always with you. And me, you don't always have. That is a watchman. That is a watchman. A person will say that is an unspiritual answer. No. But if you check the thing, it's an unorthodox answer, yes. The poor you have always with you. Does that mean you shouldn't take and say to give the poor? No, it doesn't mean so. But Christ is speaking deeper. He said, the poor you have always with you. In other words, after I go, you can work and get plenty of money and help them. But you don't always have me with you. I am going to die. Yes. And I'm going to while I'm here, take the lesson. Yes. So imagine Christ gave him forgiveness and all that, and he rejected that. Until Christ recognized, he goes to my question, what do I have to do? Do it. How is that? That is, the, that is the saddest words to hear from God to any one of us. You're going to do something wrong, what do you have to do? Do it. Pray you'll never hear that. You might be able to live with yourself like Judas. Yeah, but I was just saying, and, and to add to that, when Judas came there, he saw Lazarus who was resurrected. The woman take a very here, you know, woman with value that he had right to Messiah. And yeah. there are those things still in him touching. Well, he's in touching. Yeah. yeah. It's how he interpreted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you see, that's the reason why any of you that have any intention, they have an ideal in Jesus Christ. Greatest love of the world ever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Literally. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
draw us together closer by the grace of God as we hear a little, dear a little. You know, it's beautiful and come collectively and come to a conclusion by the grace of God. It's really one spirit broken up by the grace of God. So our next task next week is by the grace of God. We're <laughs> going to my research. I present it to you all by the grace of God. We have another beautiful discussion by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Alright, so we just close up with a word of prayer by the grace of God, right? Eh? What prayer? Merciful Yahweh, you are so precious and beautiful towards us, dear Lord Father. You manifest yourself in the form of a knowledge, your righteous knowledge, which shows that you are a Savior, you are God, and you love us dearly, dear Lord Father. We thank you, dear Lord Father, for being God in divine nature, for being love in divine nature, and manifesting this love towards us. Lord Father, Help us as we may study thine holy word to prompt the standard that you require of us. That we may indeed go out and preach thine everlasting gospel to finish this work, dear Lord God, so that others may be saved, dear Lord Father. Help us, dear Lord Father, to constantly meditate upon thine holy truths. And as thou reveal our thoughts to our minds, dear Lord Father, let us deal with it without prolonging, dear Lord Father. 